It is part of the natural physics of water and other fluids to always find their level and remain flat. If disturbed in any way, motion ensues until the flat level is resumed. If dammed up, then released, the nature of all liquids is to quickly flood outwards, taking the easiest course towards finding its new level. From W.T. Lin's First Principles of Natural Philosophy, the upper surface of a fluid at rest is a horizontal plane, because if a part of the surface were higher than the rest, those parts of the fluid which were under it would exert a greater pressure upon the surrounding parts than they receive from them so that motion would take place amongst the particles and continue until there were none at a higher level than the rest, that is, until the upper surface of the whole mass of fluid became a horizontal plane. If the earth is an extended flat plane, then this fundamental physical property of fluids finding and remaining level is consistent with experience and common sense. If, however, the Earth is a giant sphere tilted on its vertical axis, spinning through never-ending space, then it follows that truly flat, consistently level surfaces do not exist here. Moreover, if the Earth is spherical, then it follows that the surface of all Earth's water, including the massive oceans, must maintain a certain degree of convexity. But this is contrary to the fundamental physical nature of water to always be and remain level. From William Thomas Wiseman's The Earth on a Regular Plane, the surface of all water, when not agitated by natural causes, such as winds, tides, earthquakes, etc., is perfectly level. The sense of sight proves this to every unprejudiced and reasonable mind. Can any so-called scientist, who teaches that the earth is a whirling globe, take a heap of liquid water, whirl it around, and so make rotundity? He cannot. Therefore, it is utterly impossible to prove that an ocean is a whirling rotund section of a globular earth, rushing through space at the lying given rate of false philosophers. If we were living on a whirling ball earth, every pond, lake, marsh, canal, and other large body of standing water each part would have to comprise a slight arc or semicircle curveting downwards from the central summit. For example, if the ball Earth were 25,000 miles in circumference, as NASA and modern astronomers say, then spherical trigonometry dictates the surface of all standing water must curve downwards an easily measurable 8 inches per mile multiplied by the square of the distance. This means along a six-mile channel of standing water, the Earth would dip six feet on either end from the central peak. To the benefit of true science, and to the detriment of modern astronomy's pseudoscience, such an experiment can and has been tested. In Cambridge, England, there is a 20-mile canal called the Old Bedford, which passes in a straight line through the Fenlands known as the Bedford Level. The water has no interruption from locks or water gates of any kind, and remains stationary, making it perfectly suitable for determining whether any amount of convexity or curvature actually exists. In the latter part of the 19th century, Dr. Samuel Robotham, a famous flat earther and author of the fine book Earth Not a Globe, an experimental inquiry into the true figure of the Earth, proving it a plane without axial or orbital motion, and the only material world in the universe, traveled to the Bedford level and performed a series of experiments to determine whether the surface of standing water is flat or convex. Samuel Robotham wrote, A boat with a flagstaff, the top of the flag five feet above the surface of the water, was directed to sail from a place called Welch's Dam, a well-known ferry passage, to another called Wellney Bridge. These two points are six statute miles apart. The author, with a good telescope, went into the water and with the eye about eight inches above the surface, observed the receding boat during the whole period required to sail to Welney Bridge. The flag and the boat were distinctly visible throughout the whole distance. There could be no mistake as to the distance passed over, as the man in charge of the boat had instructions to lift one of his oars to the top of the arch of the moment he reached the bridge. The experiment commenced about three o'clock in the afternoon of a summer's day, and the sun was shining brightly and nearly behind or against the boat during the whole of its passage. Every necessary condition had been fulfilled, and the result was to the last degree definite and satisfactory. The conclusion was unavoidable that the surface of the water for a length of six miles did not, to any appreciable extent, decline or curvate downwards from the line of sight. 
but if the earth is a globe the surface of the six miles length of water would have been six feet higher in the center than at the two extremities from this experiment it follows that the surface of standing water is not convex and therefore that the earth is not a globe on the contrary this simple experiment is all sufficient to prove that the surface of the water is parallel to the line of sight and is therefore horizontal and that the earth cannot be other than a plane in a second experiment dr robotham placed seven flags along the edge of the water each one mile distant from the next with their tops positioned five feet above the surface near the last one he also positioned a longer eight-foot staff bearing a three-foot flag so that its bottom aligned precisely with the tops of the other flags he then mounted a telescope at a height of five feet behind the first flag and took his observations if the earth was a globe of twenty five thousand miles each successive flag would have to decline a definite and determined amount below the last the first and second flags simply established the line of sight the third flag should then fall eight inches below the second the fourth flag thirty two inches below the fifth six feet the sixth ten feet eight inches and the seventh flag should be a clear sixteen feet eight inches below the line of sight even if the earth was a globe of a hundred thousand miles an amount of easily measurable curvature should and would still be evident in this experiment but the reality is not a single inch of curvature was detected and the flags all lined up perfectly as consistent with a flat plane dr robotham wrote the rotundity of the earth would necessitate the above conditions but as they cannot be found to exist the doctrine must be pronounced as only a simple theory having no foundation in fact a pure invention of misdirected genius splendid in its comprehensiveness and bearing upon natural phenomena but nevertheless mathematical and logical necessities compel its denunciation as an absolute falsehood dr robotham conducted several other experiments using telescopes spirit levels and theodolites special precision instruments used for measuring angles in horizontal or vertical planes by positioning them at equal heights aimed at each other successively he proved over and over the earth to be perfectly flat for miles without a single inch of curvature his findings caused quite a stir in the scientific community and thanks to thirty years of his efforts the shape of the earth became a hot topic of debate around the turn of the nineteenth century william carpenter wrote is water level or is it not was a question once asked of an astronomer practically yes theoretically no was the reply now when theory does not harmonize with practice the best thing to do is to drop the theory it is getting too late now to say so much the worse for the facts to drop the theory which supposes a curved surface to standing water is to acknowledge the facts whenever experiments have been tried on the surface of standing water the surface has always been found to be level if the earth were a globe the surface of all standing water would be convex this is an experimental proof that the earth is not a globe from the june twenty sixth eighteen ninety six edition of the english mechanic since any given body of water must have a level surface no one part higher than another and seeing that all our oceans a few inland seas excepted are connected together it follows that they are all virtually of the same level astronomers say the magical magnetism of gravity is what keeps all the oceans of the world stuck to the ball earth they say that because the earth is so massive by virtue of this mass it creates a magic force able to hold people oceans and atmosphere tightly clung to the underside of the spinning ball unfortunately however they cannot provide any practical example of this on a scale smaller than the planetary for example a spinning wet tennis ball has the exact opposite effect of the supposed ball earth any water poured over it simply falls off the sides and giving it a spin results in water flying off 360 degrees like a dog shaking off after a bath astronomers concede the wet tennis ball example displays the opposite effect of their supposed ball earth but claim that at some unknown mass the magic adhesive properties of gravity suddenly kick in allowing the spinning wet tennis ball earth to keep every drop of gravitized water stuck to the surface again their theory flies in the face of all practical evidence but they've been running with it for five hundred years so why stop now william carpenter wrote if the earth were a globe rolling and dashing through space at the rate of a hundred miles in five seconds of time 
the waters of seas and oceans could not, by any known law, be kept on its surface. The assertion that they could be retained under these circumstances, being an outrage upon human understanding and credulity, but as the earth, that is, the habitable world of dry land, is found to be standing out of the water and in the water of the mighty deep, whose circumferential boundary is ice, we may throw the statement back into the teeth of those who made it, and flaunt before their faces the flag of reason and common sense, inscribed with a proof that the earth is not a globe. In one portion of its long route, the great river Nile flows for a thousand miles with a fall of only one foot. This is a feat which, of course, would be a sheer impossibility if the earth had spherical curvature. Many other rivers, including the Congo in West Africa, the Amazon in South America, and the Mississippi in North America, all flow for thousands of miles in directions totally incompatible with the supposed globularity of the earth as well. Thomas Winship wrote, Rivers run down to the sea because of the inclination of their beds rising at an altitude above sea level in some cases thousands of feet above the sea they follow the easiest route to their level the sea the piranha and the paraguay in south america are navigable for over two thousand miles and their waters run the same way until they find their level of stability where the sea tides begin but if the world be a globe the amazon in south america that flows always in an easterly direction would sometimes be running uphill and sometimes down according to the movement of the globe. Then the Congo in West Africa, that always pursues a westerly course to the sea, would in the same manner be running alternately up and down. When that point of the globe exactly between them was up, they would both be running up, although in opposite directions. And when the globe took half a turn, they would both be running down. We know from practical experiment that water will find its level, and cannot by any possibility remain other than level, or flat, or horizontal, whatever term may be used to express the idea. It is therefore quite out of the range of possibility that rivers could do as they would have to do on a globe. David Wardlaw Scott wrote, Whoever heard of a river in any part of its course flowing uphill? Yet this it would require to do were the earth a globe. Rivers like the Mississippi, which flow from the north southwards towards the equator, would need, according to modern astronomic theory, to run upwards, as the earth at the equator is said to bulge out considerably more, or, in other words, is higher than at any other part. Thus, the Mississippi, in its immense course of over 3,000 miles, would have to ascend 11 miles before it reached the Gulf of Mexico. And William Carpenter wrote, there are rivers which flow east, west, north, and south. That is, rivers are flowing in all directions over the Earth's surface, and at the same time. Now if the Earth were a globe, some of these rivers would be flowing uphill and others down, taking it for a fact that there really is an up and down in nature, whatever form she assumes. But since rivers do not flow uphill, and the globular theory requires that they should, it is a proof that the Earth is not a globe.